Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Mac and T Show Podcast. Here are your hosts, Brian McKay and T. David. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show. Welcome back to the Mac and T Show podcast. A T, a henceforth, and uh, from now on, I am only to re- be referred to. Oh Lord, as Emmy Award dominated. Lord, right, I see, y'all see what I got to work with now, Lord. He <laughs> already was the producer, the editor. The <laughs> it's henceforth and and from now on. I can't. Well, then that mean I'm going to say, yeah, I work with an Emmy-nominated producer. <laughs> so I get to brag, too. All right, we can go with that. I can go with that. So I can go with that. Congratulations. Thank and you. And look, now I'm making it work for me. See how you do that? That's uh, you, you, you just turned it right around. That's beautiful. So here's the deal, people. Um, I am uh, have been working with Debbie and Nelly on her podcast. And uh, doing some other things for her video wise over the past year. She has a marathon coming up in May where she shoots 2,400 free throws. That's 24 hours, and it's 100 free throws each hour. 2,400 free throws made, made, excuse me, made 2,400 free throws. So she actually shoots more, you know, count misses, things like that. Um, so, and she's raising money for Special Olympics. She has raised almost $300,000 over the past two years that she's been doing the event. So she's hoping to uh, either match that or maybe even possibly get close to doubling it this year. Um, She has celebrities involved. She has all, and this is just a really good thing, really great cause. Um, And it has been, the, the marathon has been, uh, nominated for an Emmy in a new category that started this year uh, for so for uh, what did I tell you? It was uh, for charitable events. It's going to be a subcategory of web series that they're invoking this year for the Emmys. Oh. It's going to be a new deal for charitable events. So it falls under that category. It's been nominated and since I am a uh, credited as a producer of this marathon. I will henceforth and from now on be referred to oh, Lord. Okay. as Here Emmy Award me. nominated. And God help people if I win. I mean, if we win, excuse me, if we win. If, if I win, if we win. So, you know, there's a little, little about me. In fact, Lord it's going her. to kind of preempt us uh, here on the podcast coming up soon because the the marathon is May 15th and 16th. If you would like to, you know, if you like to do that sort of thing and people listening, if they like to do that sort of thing, you can donate to the cause at the website 24 hours NBN for nothing but net.com. 24 hours NBN. I'll put it down in the description bar below in this podcast but uh coming up we'll have this episode which is actually taping on sunday for people who are looking for us monday uh we will have already been out a day so we're taping this on sunday because i have things going on this week leading up to the to the i'll see what's happening so, we're gonna go we're gonna go missing again this so, emmy nominated this, producer <laughs> this is my plan go, go missing gonna, again it, it ain't my fault we're gonna do this week. Uh, we'll do next week. We'll take a two week break, and I promise it will only be a two week break. And we'll be back in time. It. <laughs> it will be. It, it'll be on me if it's not. But I promise to be only a two week break, and come back for the uh, just in time for the NBA playoffs. So that's my goal. So the next two weeks you'll have us, then we'll have a two week hiatus. Uh, while I go do it, time uh, for Loki them to be back or something, right? And that too, yes. Loki will be there in playoffs, and yeah, we'll be rocking and rolling with some new content. Um, 
Speaking of, uh, you want to talk about a little cybersecurity? Okay, so Brian knows about me. I try to, I try not to use like my, I don't use credit cards everywhere. I don't like to use, I don't really like to put my information in much of anything. Uh, I wish more people would do a uh, dual sign in on on uh, on especially stuff like your bank. I know one of my banks do the other one. I'm a, I think I'm gonna reach out to them and make a request. Cause dual sign in it helps on, on you know people being able to hack in because they it'll be two levels of authentication. But uh, I do my best to do my part and like my phone provider. They was like, hey, we doing this go in so you can um, log out with them sharing your data and all that. And I sure went to my providers, my website, went in there. It's like, yep, I don't want you sharing my data. Thank you for asking. That don't mean they ain't still doing it, but I try to do my part. Well, um, it's worse than I thought, Brian. I, I think I knew it was cyber wars happening, <laughs> but I don't think I knew the level. So, this lady, and y'all can look it up. It's a really nice interview with Nicole Pearl Roth, P E R L R O T H. She did an interview on uh, Christina Amapour's show. Um, and she was talking about how now, uh, I mean, it's always been cyber wars, but like I was telling Brian before the show, show now that we use so much, and I use We Loosely once again. Uh, so much is connected to the internet, and basically, um, the United the America is a superpower on around you know as far as having military and all that. However, there are other countries that you know if they want to get get at us for lack of a better phrase, they can they trying to figure out how to do so through uh, internet and or. Um, the the uh the cloud and all of that. So uh Brian, did you did you read the book the book The President is Missing? No, but John, I, I, John I think James you talked Patterson about it before. And Clinton. You need to read it. It's scary. And so and as I was reading it, I was like, you know what, y'all trying to play this off like this fiction, because I don't want to give away what happened, but it's right. some stuff around the internet. And I was like, I think this is so real. Because a lot of our our energy, water, all of that is connected to the grid, which is connected to some device, some computer telling stuff to run. And if they want to, they, as in some of these smaller countries that don't like us, want to attack us, that's the way they're going to do it. At any rate, to make a, a long story short, short story long, the, uh, they're, they, not just us, countries apparently pay hackers just to try to hack into stuff and figure out how to do it. And it's like this war. Okay, well, I pay Brian a million dollars. and Well, I pay you two million, Brian. And then, well, I pay you three million, Brian. And it's a mess out there in, in the cyber war. And her book is, This is How They Tell Me the World Ends, The Cyber Weapons Arms Race. Like, it's a whole race for, I guess, if you are good at hacking um, and all hacking ain't illegal. Like they pay people to learn little soft spots and little, uh, you know how they tell you to watch and make sure air ain't coming in your house. That like they looking for those kind of little cracks in people like iPhone and Facebook and. Uh-huh. And she was talking about some of the hacks that have already happened with Equifax, and I think I may or may not have heard it. They don't talk about this stuff a lot. They kind of breeze through it when they say it on the news. Um. But uh, yeah, it's crazy out here in these streets. So be careful with your information as best you can and stop sharing people's information. If you ain't really got no reason to have your location on, which most people don't, just turn it off on GPS. Some 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 of this stuff ain't gonna be avoidable because she talked about cars. Um now in her world, she talked about how she tried to um not to use her GPS. Um or use her car for that matter when she's do- doing certain things because she know that her car has GPS capabilities in it if somebody can tell where she's been and all that. I was like, that's way too scary. But just a heads up, 
um, do what you can to protect your information. Don't on um, stuff that's really important to you. She was like emails and all don't have the same passwords and logins and stuff for because once people hack into your emails, she was saying that if you're using the same and, and a lot of y'all know this, but I don't think pe people knowing stuff don't mean they practice it. <laughs> and yeah, you say, oh, well, I don't want to forget it. So, well, you, you figure out a way, get a password, keep or something, but figure out a way not to have if somebody steal your email or, or one of your logins for Amazon Prime or something that then they got access to all of your stuff. Yeah, I can actually tell you just on a smaller scale of that Google Chrome recently, if you've had and if you had, if you're one of those that saves different address like different logins on websites in Google Chrome, they are now at a point where I don't know if they've been hacked or someone or if this is part of the bigger, you know, Equifax and all that type of deal. But if they they have a detection deal where if you log into a certain website like say disney plus say i log into disney plus online on, on my google chrome and they're part of a data breach google chrome sent you a message to let you know this website was recently part of a data breach uh would you like to remove your password change your password and it sent you to another section where it shows you a bunch of other websites that you may have been logged into the head of data breach and yeah, I know someone the other day they had 167 different uh, sites. They had to go in and either change their password or remove it or, you know, remove their account, whatever they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you need to be careful. And I got one more. And well, we, I, I asked Brian to put the link on, on something that we own. Okay. Um, uh, Cause I and I didn't even know this was out here. You know, I try to watch. Uh, I don't. I the, I guess the only social media that I do and uh, consistently is is YouTube. Because I at first I didn't consider YouTube to be social media, but it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and other than that, I'm really not on it, and I'm really not on YouTube. I watch other people's and stuff, but um, it's a site. Give me two seconds. I'm looking through my thing. And you can put your information in and it'll tell you if, if your emails or whatever been um, compromised. I was like, cool. Um, well, Lord, I don't save so much. I don't see Cool it. and scary at the same time. <laughs> well, because even, because, and this was a different lady. Now, this wasn't the lady that I watched on I'm a Poor. This lady was on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Uh, shout out Roland Martin. He don't know me from Adam. But at any rate, uh, she she was kind of talking about the same trying to secure your stuff. And she was like, even when you close down, uh, like say you're like, I'm just going to turn my Facebook stuff off. She was like, people still have access to it. And just because you turned it off don't mean that they like deleted your data or anything. And so, you know, back, I ain't never had no MySpace or something. Shoot, I was like, I don't even know. I have no idea what MySpace or any of that looks like. But if you were in on these old platforms or platforms that didn't make it, you still need to check and make sure that um, your information wasn't breached. So I can't find it. Uh, but when I do, we'll put it somewhere so people can use it and look up. Check and see if you've been breached. Yeah, I'll, uh, whenever you do find it, I'll put it in the description bar and I'll uh, put it out on our Facebook and Twitter for people that uh, follow us on there. I said I, I, I had stopped. Uh, I said I wasn't going to add this uh, to our docket, but you know what? Your mama asked me to, to talk Shout about it. Shout out to mama. We're going to talk about it. Georgia comes another state uh, I guess it was a couple of days ago they signed this into law where they are going to make daylight saving time a permanent thing not you not do it so they're not going to change when they be talking about time fast forward spring forward fall back I think it's dumb Florida made the same thing but I ain't heard nothing even the people that I know that live in Florida didn't say well no I'm going to stand the time now so I don't really know what these states doing. 
But I, I think that they should take this to the federal government and be like, hey, leave it alone. Uh, the farmers, y'all gonna have to figure out, because that's who started this, to my understanding. It was farmer related, agricultural related. I want this at the moment. Agriculture related. And why? Who Just leave is? it alone. Okay, well, I'm trying to see who. Representative West Cantrell is quoted as saying criminals like the cloak of darkness so they have one less hour in the evening to commit their crimes. I can't do it. I'm so I, I, can't. <laughs> I can't do this. this. Why? Okay, first of all. That's, that's some foolishness. <laughs> Brian, what are we doing? He The fact that this is, oh my gosh. Yeah, he actually said that. <laughs> but, you know, forget that ignorance. I didn't have a clue. And forget and forgive my ignorance. I didn't have a clue that other states had already started doing this type of thing. Yeah, until I read up on it when uh when Mama talked about it yesterday. Um, yeah, I yeah, had no idea um, this was going on. It was 2019 when I believe when Florida they put it on they something they were voting about and they put it on. It was passed. And I kept asking my people, like, what y'all down there doing? Like, are y'all on a different time? And it didn't sound like, at least this person didn't necessarily know what, right. like, if they had done anything. Well, what you going to do, Brian? Oh, you're going to be like, oh, well, I live in, in Georgia now. We on Eastern Central Standard Time now. And that's where we stand. <laughs> Eastern Central. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, uh, this list here says Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and South Carolina. So I all no the idea. East Coast just want to stay on, just, not all, but j just talk to the federal government, talk to the senators, <laughs> put a bill for, that should be yeah. a bipartisan bill for y'all to work on. <laughs> and when you are voting for your, your representatives in the next election, remember the ones that say ignorant comments. Yeah, that's a foolishness. Ooh. Uh, yeah, so that's... Good luck the, with that, though. I don't really know how that's going to work. I, eventually, I think they're going to change it where we stop doing it. That's that's the plan. That's yeah. what I hope the plan is. Yeah, that seems like that's where that's headed, which would be a lot less... Because uh, this chaotic. is... Uh, yeah, it seems like chaos and, and confusion to me. You fly down to New York to Atlanta, and you like, oh yeah, I got plenty of time. No, no, you early. It, it's Central Standard Time now. What? When did Atlanta get into Central Standard? Don't worry about it, because if you don't live there or travel there a lot, you ain't gonna necessarily know it until right. till the captain come over and be like, it is. You know, at the end of the flight, they'd be like, it's eight twenty eight Central mm -hmm. Standard Time. <laughs> You'd be like, what? You didn't pay no oh. attention to it. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's jump into the NFL draft. Coming up this Thursday, the first round. Ooh, I'm happy. And I'm happy for less of a reason about worried about who getting drafted. It seems like they've been talking about this for a year. Go ahead. <laughs> now, Mel Kuyper, yeah, that, it seems like the, the Mel Kuyper and um, what's the other guy from ESPN? Todd McShay. It seems like the, they, they start their, their, their mock drafts and their analysis Earlier and early. earlier every year. Way, way too early. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I think Mel Kuyper actually put out a mock draft for this year, a week after last year's draft. Just kind of a way too early type deal, he called it. Uh, yeah. This particular mock draft that I have in front of me is his latest, which was kind of outdated at this point, but it's April 13th. Um. And he has six quarterbacks going in the first round and two trades and actually one out of the top five. Um, so I'm just going to kind of roll down a couple of them. He got Jacksonville taking Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. The Jets, he has, even though he says in his analysis, he has Justin Field rated higher. He has Zach Wilson from BYU, quarterback from BYU, going to the Jets, who now need a quarterback since they traded Sam Donald to Carolina. 
um, then our uh, 49ers. Oh, Lord. He has taken Mac Jones. If that happened, Brian, I just want to pause. Brian, I might jump jump off the boat. And nothing against the man. I just, what quarterback do you know that's come out of Saban's system that has done well in the NFL and has been a star in the NFL? Well, this is the arrogance of that coach that thinks he can make anybody good. But if you do that, if you think you can make anybody good, why wouldn't you take the athletic? He can throw the ball just as well as this guy. I'm just confused on why you – anyway, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to let it go. So, yeah. Uh, then he has a trade where Miami moves up and takes Atlanta's pick at four where they would – he go thought Gators. maybe take a quarterback, but he they did uh-uh. not take a quarterback. Go Gators. They, they going to yes. get Pitts. Kyle Pitts from Florida. That's my guess. But anyway. Yes. Uh, then we have our first offensive tackle taken at five with a penny suet. Suet, 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 suet. Yeah, from I'm Oregon. The, the kid from Oregon uh, that everybody is salivating over, who honestly wouldn't be a too bad a choice for – the 49ers, if they were just wanted to help somebody out. But uh, the Falcons would be at obviously at six at that point where they would take Trey Lance, the quarterback from North, North Dakota State. Yeah, it's about time for them to uh, get ready for um, Maddie's departure. Yes, and this uh, seven, we have Jamar Chase from White Rider Sleepers LSU going to Detroit, number eight. Carolina Panthers, who just picked up Sam Darnold in a trade. They would get Devontae Smith, the wide receiver from Alabama. I mean, we're, we're, I'm trying to see. I'll say nine. Denver will take Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. Then we get to 10, where New England has moved up and uh, taken Dallas's pick to get Justin Fields. So all the way to 10. Y'all gonna let Bill Belichick come up. Man, they can't take, let it. And maybe Justin Field doesn't work out. But on paper, he's your second, and some people have him rated the top quarterback in the draft. And I y'all just don't see him not working out. And I'm not like a Justin Fields fan by any means, but I mean, I understand talent, just like Michael Jordan. I'm not a Michael Jordan fan, but I'm no fool either. Now, the, he can play. I don't mm-hmm. seen him. He was on that uh last chance, not last uh that where, where they followed the high schools. Was it Netflix side? I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it was Netflix, but it could somebody was following high schoolers, and you got to watch them play and and because they did it for several years, and he was on one of the seasons. Yes, I remember that. And uh, then you know, go to Georgia. They already had the the guy that he wound up being. Did he even make it to the league? I don't think he even got drafted. I don't think so but, either. Yeah. But so he was like, I'm not playing behind him and left and went to Ohio and had success. Yes. Um, the only other thing I wanted to just highlight, just because I'm an old miss guy, uh, Tennessee Titans are projected to take Elijah Moore at 22, which would give them Elijah Moore and AJ Brown. And they will both be honestly starters in this lineup because Corey Davis uh, went on. I don't remember where he went, but I think he was traded somewhere, or either signed somewhere else. So uh, Elijah Moore would fit in right where he was in the slot. And AJ a. Brown on the outside, they would effectively have two Ole Miss Rebels in their starting lineup. So yeah, we'll get more into the NFL draft obviously next week because they would have had the draft at that point. Uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. I think it's smoke and mirrors. Me too. I just don't see it. With him, the way they like to move, when when Garoppolo, when Garoppolo took them to the uh, – when they had success, all that stuff, and he can't run, or he probably wasn't a willing runner. And you don't necessarily want you, but you want him to be able to and be a threat. If you and, put Justin Fields in that offense. And even if San Francisco does – you know, skip him. There's talk all last week of Chicago moving up for a quarterback. And 
I thought it was for the 49er pick. It wasn't. It was actually for one below them. So if they move up, they need a quarterback in the worst way because, first of all, they're already botched with Trubisky. And, you know, <laughs> he's now um, backing up Josh Allen in Buffalo. And they have Andy Dalton right now as their QB1. And you saw that he didn't pan out at all in Dallas. Yeah. Because Dallas had a bunch of weapons around him. And when obviously they didn't think Dak was going to go down. But when Dak went down, Andy just wasn't it. So that could be a situation where Chicago could move up and get Justin Fields. Yeah, it could be some of them this week or the before or during the draft. But, so. you know, and this could all be getting people just to watch the draft because, you know, the ratings for the draft are always really, really high. Um, Yeah, but moving on to the NBA. I watched your Lakers last night against Dallas. Yeah. A team they've now lost uh, the third in a row twice to Dallas in, in this little three-game stretch. Um, yeah, Anthony Davis says in the post game that the Lakers are trying to rediscover their connection. I like we were like you were saying beforehand, I'll let you have the floor on this, but uh, they they need to stop trying to be what they're not. Be old school like run. And what I can't understand is if it, it wasn't like Byron shot shot plenty Byron Scott and Cooper, for a matter of fact, shot enough threes to keep you honest, mm -hmm. but they weren't running out looking for threes. And you know, it's the it's the hot thing and Golden State made it a hot thing, but they had people that could shoot. Everybody don't have that. And again, being a 35%, 37%, that's uh, less than average. So you got AD, you got LeBron, use your post players. Then when people force to double team them, you can get wide open looks. And they, and you don't have to take them looks. You know, when you're playing pickup, you'd be like, self check. <laughs> It's a reason some of y'all open. And I don't even know if they say that now in the pickup because I ain't played no pickup in years, but self-check. Like, you don't, you just leave them open and double the best player out there because you know that that, that dude, and then that be the guy that hit that game with him, right? That, that it'd be 14, 13, and it'd be like, oh, he hit the last shot or she. Uh, I usually play with boys, so that's why I said he first. At any rate, um, you got AD. He's a better post player. They keep hollering, we want him to shoot more threes. Why? Why do you – he can shoot it, but it don't mean you because you can that you should. Post him up. Get him in the mid-range. Even Kevin Durant ain't out here jacking up a bunch of threes. Look at Dirk. People probably think of him as a three-point shooter. He liked that mid-range shot. Get it on that high post or out, you know, the, the you don't see deep post up players a lot anymore since Shaq and them been gone. But I can't, Brian. I'm so tired of the three point line. Again, take it away until the last two minutes and y'all play regular basketball. And let's raise this rim. I'm tired of everybody dunking. And all right, back to M and Norm nominated producer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I. Mm. Because yeah. it's not just the Lakers, Brian. It's a bunch of mediocre teams out here chasing these threes. Go right. Ahead. Everybody wants to be Golden State, and they just cannot. And even Golden State is not really Golden State right now. I mean, they, they have Steph, but, you know, and he's doing his thing, which I I don't – listen, I don't know who started it. And I know he actually said it at one point that he thinks he's the MVP. Steph Curry cannot be the MVP of this season. I'm sorry, I understand he's on tear. The MVP, and this is just personal to me, but the MVP has always been, to me, a top five, a top four finisher in the league. Your team at least has to be in the top four. You can't be you know, struggling to get your team in the playoffs and be named the MVP. I'm sorry. That's just my personal opinion. What is your thoughts on that? 
Right now, I don't even know who the MVP could be because everybody hurt. Every time, I mean, I guess MB back out there. Is he back? He's back, and he is the front runner right now. Giannis is he? I, he they've been not really talking about him. No, they. And, and this is this is what Giannis is falling into a trap of. What happened, you know, to Shaq and Kobe, people like that. They. You you win an MVP or two, and then they think, okay, well now it's got to find somebody else to fill that spot. Can't give it to Giannis again, you know. It's, it's almost like they they don't want him. I mean, and I hadn't really seen a lot of Minnesota's. I mean Minnesota, Milwaukee's games, so I don't really know exactly how he's doing. Um, and yeah, and that's that means you can't be the MVP because but most people should we would know like that he was having this great and outstanding season that his team was doing well. This has been a kind of awkward year. Again, it's part of the Harden could have been it, but now he's been missing games, yes. the hamstrings. LeBron could have been it, but then he had the ankle injury. It's just been really awkward. So I'm, you know, let me tell, tell you how been. awkward it's been. And I and don't get me wrong, this man is having a great season for this team, but the Garden was sharing the MVP at Julius Randle the other night. And because people love them and the way they playing, he he fits your fo- they top four right now. He been he has had an outstanding season. He yes. just and I don't think he a big enough name that they would give it to him. Because I I still think it's politics in it and. Uh, because these the people that vote for it, they are the uh, journalists mostly, right? Right. So I don't think enough journalists would put him as the number one person. Um, so yeah, yeah, this should be interesting. Uh, Kurt, I mean, I could give it. He he been on a, a tear like like we hadn't seen in a while. His team might not. His team might. I mean, his team just not good. So no, and like we discussed last week, you take him off this team, and Draymond Green is not carrying him anywhere. So, and no offense to him, because when he has all these players around him, he looks like a million dollars. I mean, the other night they were playing Denver, Draymond had 19 assists, 12 rebounds. I mean, he, he fills up a stat sheet when he has, you know, the Steph Curry's around him. And he's just that type of player. But yeah, you take Steph off that team, they. They're at the bottom of the barrel. So it, it should be interesting. It is, it's what is about nine games or so, eight, nine games left. Right. I had no idea who, who could win that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, moving right along, we have the finale of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Inside yeah. episode six, entitled One World, One People. Um, the <clears throat> excuse me. We start off with the flag smashers uh, interrupting GRC vote from last week. Uh, we get Sam. It was an insurrection. Uh, insurrection at its finest. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Sam Wilson flies in wearing his new red, white, and blue suit. Uh, announces himself as Captain America when uh, one of the officers asked who he was. Uh, Sam and Bucky spring in action, uh, helping to save hostages, messing up. The Flag Smashers' plans. Uh, John Walker seemingly uh, makes a 180 turn from last episode by saving hostage instead of continuing his hunt for Carly. And Sharon Carter is revealed to be the power broker. Yeah, we she, thought that. Yes. And she, uh, as she kills Backdrop the Leaper and Carly uh, Morgenthau in order to preserve her anonymity. Uh, Sam takes Carly's uh, lifeless body and comes down. And I didn't realize this at the time we were watching, but on the rewatch, it's almost like he was an angel from heaven with his wings out. Uh, it, it was beautiful. I didn't realize it when we were watching it earlier on Friday. That's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, he comes down from the building amongst a horde of reporters, frontline workers, uh, bystanders. He gives an emotional speech about, you know, how we can all be better fighting the good fight. He basically cementing his status as new Captain America. Uh, the flag smashers are blown up on their transport to the raft. But 
before that, we find out that one made it out into the Hudson. So Sam uh, went off to go chase him or her. We don't know. But we do know that there's one free. So I don't know if that's going to come into existence sometime down the road. But a group that is being transported to the RAF or blown up in their in their van transport. It is revealed to be Zemo's butler that basically hit the button on the blow up. He called um, from the back, back down to the back cave, got <laughs> Alfred to come out. Oh, uh, and also later on, it's revealed that Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, uh, aka Val, was revealed to have helped Zemo plan the bombing, basically foreshadowing that, you know, eventually she's going to help him. Uh, or eventually he's going to get out there prison at the raft somehow, some way, and going to join her and her group, maybe as the Dark Avengers, uh, because she gives uh, John Walker a new outfit, basically uh, cementing him as U.S. agent, actually calls him U.S. agent. RST arrogant. will refer to him. Uh, U.S. arrogant. <laughs> agent arrogant, that we call him. Uh, this uh, could be, like I said, could be setting up the Dark Avengers or could be a part of the upcoming Thunderbolts movie. Um, Bucky finishes off his list of amends with Mr. Nakajima, revealing that he, brainwashed as the Winter Soldier, killed his son. Mm -hmm. He uh, crosses the name off his list and that, you know, basically showing that he was done with his amends. He gifts the book to his therapist. Uh, you know, thanking her for her help, which was pretty cool because in that scene, they had the backdrop of therapist's office, which was like a forest and trees and things like that. I was that. like, I want one of them on one of my walls. Yeah, uh -huh. it was a pretty cool scene, but it's also maybe kind of showing that uh, Bucky is, is out of the woods on his, you know. Yeah, you went like, too far, Brian. I did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Too much. You well, you know, that's what Emmy Award nominees do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, oh. <laughs> Sam uh, makes a visit to Isaiah Bradley. He takes Isaiah and his grandson El El Elijah, or Eli, to the Captain America Memorial, where there is now a section that showcases Isaiah's time as Captain America. It was an emotional moment, uh, for sure, because of what that man has gone through. It highlights, you know, basically how he was erased. Uh, oh, and he even makes a quip when when they're at Isaiah's house. Isaiah makes a quip about uh, jokingly that Sam is still not a, a Martin Malcolm or Mandela. Uh, right. Even though he's Captain America now. Uh, that was a pretty cool thing because this scene, as I find out, was filmed in Atlanta in the neighborhood that Mal uh, uh, Martin Luther King lived. You can actually see the house that is known as his house. Um, you know, it's big. Was this one of these <laughs> things where they slowed everything down again? No. This, you this, oh. This, but you can see the house in the background on this shot, and you can see it in episode two. So upon my reading, I found all this out. Um, let's see. Oh, and the end, ending scenes, you know, just a montage of things. We see the Wilson family cook out, celebrating, you know, Sam and Bucky's, you know, celebrating with the family uh, and, their, and their neighbors. Sharon Carter giving a full pardon and giving her old job with the CIA. Lord, it's terrible. <laughs> and which she promptly, you know, tells someone on the phone that she now has access to all kinds of secrets. And Get kinds all of information. the information. Uh, so mm -hmm. line up the buyers and found out after the fact, uh, after we watched on Friday, but there is a fourth Captain America film in development where Sam will get his own Captain America movie, which would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, that, that's going to be pretty cool. And just to the see best them. part was when, oh, you ain't finished. Go no, ahead. no, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with the breakdown, but. The best part of the was when he he take the old man to the museum and got his own section. Yeah, that was that was really cool to see, uh, and I hope that he has, even if it's a small part. I hope he we see him in future. Movies. Yeah, because they can use him as like somebody for for 
not necessarily a mentor, but somebody for Sam to throw his ideas off or whatever. Because it ain't like you can just talk to everybody about your stuff when you're the superhero. <laughs> All right. And you see in 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 this episode, there's a rapport building with Sam and Eli. Kind of, you know, they kind of go back and forth to each other, little quips. And Eli in the comics becomes Patriot, the, the Patriot, like I've said in previous episodes. So you can see that that's coming. You just don't know how it's going to happen. Um, but yeah, and, and, you know, if he becomes the Patriot, he obviously be working alongside with Sam. So the fact that they already have kind of a, a good rapport, that bodes well for the future. Um, yeah, I, um, I don't know if it's just, we've just had so much so fast, but it just, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier just kind of came and went for me. Um, I thought <laughs> some, some parts were good, some parts were like, uh. They should have went with the virus. I don't really understand what the problem is if you, if they fighting the virus, even though we in this pandemic, so what? Yeah, I, uh, I that's going to be Disney. The Disney's, you know, just fearful of of an image type thing. And image of what? What? Are, what could people say that you guessed that the virus was coming, or you <laughs> knew it was coming, and you didn't say nothing? like what? What? Could, because if you if you watch, oh, it was something else that I just watched, and it was a virus, and I was like, and nobody tried to correlate these two things together and they were dealing with a virus. Uh, so what was it? At any rate, it ain't the first time somebody, oh, uh, in uh, uh, The Rock and The, uh, the Rock and what's the little guy? The, uh, Evan Hart. No, no, no. That last movie they did, that's a spinoff. Statham, Statham. Oh, Statham. Jason Statham, yes. That At the end of that movie, what's his name is talking about? It's a virus, it's killing everybody. But they, I mean, maybe they'll go away from it, but maybe this would be a good tie-in for what we experience, and who knows. But it's been viruses out here. I'm sure 007 will save somebody from releasing the virus every time you turn around in autumn. <laughs> anyway, they should have stuck with that virus because from what yeah, we've watched, editing. it's true. Yeah. That's why it was so choppy and yes. so discongruent, and you just was like, "What is, what is, what is, what is happening? Why does this not feel smooth like y'all other ones?" And right. then when you find that, I'd be like, "Oh, y'all cutting and pasting." Now we got this paper mache collage, and I'm out here like, "Well, I don't like uh, uh what you call what, what kind of art is it? um <laughs> origami." Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, abstract. I don't like abstract. abstract art. That's kind of almost how it felt. Like it was some kind of abstract piece. And you just kind of be like, oh, well, I can see that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I can see that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's move on to our, our next review of a movie we got to watch yesterday. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I really don't have any notes. Um, I'm just going to kind of top off and we can go just back and forth. Um, I thought it was very well done. I don't know why all the reviews have been, not so all the bad. reviews, but there have been a bunch of reviews that have been so kind of bashing it. Uh, the only negative, and this is just a personal choice, it has, has nothing to do with the actual movie uh, as far as, you know, how I feel about it. Um very gory and a lot of cussing. Uh, that would be my only two. That, that was it. Even, so I don't really know, and I, maybe they go over the top with the gore because of the, when you if when, if you ever played the video game. Right, right. But they didn't have to carry that over to this. Like, they could have the regular blood, but like when he stabbed the man in the head and like a pound of blood, I'm like, it was it waterfalls and gushing. Sword, had that blood would not like that. What are we doing? And so, um, that was that was too much. Let, let's let's dial that back, people. <laughs> right. I love how they set up a second one. You know, a right? Because there's gonna be one. another one. That's why I say that. Let's dial that back because I yes. it's gonna be another one. 
Um, I love that they they didn't just outright give a scorpion. They made a descendant of scorpion, and you know, and then we get him and at the end, we we, we kind of book you in with the beginning. We see scorpions, uh, you know, his his faded and you, beginning, and then we if see. If you him gotta watch the first seven minutes, it's on YouTube, and that's 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 the scorpion setup. Right. Uh, Sub Zero was was cool to see on the screen. Um, I can't think of some of these other ones' names. I think it was nice. They had Jax. Jax was cool. guy. <laughs> Jax. Oh, Jax. Bless his heart. Jax with them tink tink arms. Man. Oh. And thank God they uh, rectified that at the end. Before yeah, we ain't going to tell too much since some people might not have got to see it yet. But Yes, and I forgot to do a spoiler warning. Uh, spoiler warning. <laughs> well, we hadn't really said anything that spoiled them besides, I mean, yeah. it's gory. You, if you saw the trailer, you should see the blood. It's gory. Tink Tink uh, arms. That's, just remember the Tink Tink arms. Yeah, you'll it's know what to refer to when you see that. <laughs> uh, I love uh, Lord Raiden. He's every bit as cool as he is in the game. Um. They only did not do... know the uh, uh golly, what was the guy's name? What what was a uh, frisbee thrower's name? K- K- I said Kung Lao. Don't know who that character is. K- of Kung it's Lao. what's his name, cousin? But he said it's his cousin. But I was like, I never seen this character. Yeah. Cause I wasn't like that into Mortal Kombat, but I played it and watched them old. Yeah, I can't remember the name of his character. But... The moves up. <laughs> Yeah, Kung Lao cool. was cool. Yeah. I love when he does the little move that everybody loved to play in the game where he's kicking in the air. Yeah, when he kicking yeah. it just like three or four times and walk up your body, I guess that's what's happening. I don't really know, but yeah, uh, he finally got around to that. Sonya Blade was awesome. Uh, I'm telling you, the, the character that stole the movie is for, for uh, as far as comedic effect was Kano. They gave yeah. him all the great funny all lines. All the, the one-liners. I don't know why he spit and I ain't going to, I was just yeah, that, like, that, that, that right there was unnecessary. I was like, that's just, why? It it added nothing to the movie. It yeah. added nothing. And I'm just like, why? Some young, some old man and his 13-year-old self, I guess, thought this would be funny, but it was gross. It's just like, why? It had, it added yeah. nothing to the movie. I mean, just like all the cussing. I mean, it's almost like they were forcing themselves to cuss at some points. All right, you can see maybe Kano's character because he just that dude. He um, just ain't uh, to be that type. Yeah, but then he was racist and I, I, and I said that he was racist, uh, sexist, uh, everything is. And he it, was it, all the ist. Yeah, he was it. He was the ist of the movie. <laughs> um, but no, very good movie. I thought but I enjoyed it. I would give it a. I would give it a B and it probably would get higher, but they just, it was too much. It was, the gore was unnecessary, cursing unnecessary, but it was solid in that. It gave you a little background and, and I like how they connected uh, Scorpion with one of the characters that you see. And so. Right. So that is uh, something to look forward to, Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, and by the ju- by the way things ended off, we, we see the fact that I'm not gonna give it all away, but we see the uh background, we see the poster for a certain character that is big in Mortal Kombat lore. So yeah, he was one of the him. main characters. I was wondering who that was, but then it was yeah. like, okay, they didn't use him in this one. Yes, yeah, so he is going to uh possibly make an appearance if they make a second one. I haven't seen anything other than just people hopeful that it comes. So uh let's let's go ahead and tap this one off with a couple of sayings that make no sense. Okay, hold on. One thing we want to I want to say is one, I found the site and they can look it up themselves. And it, these are the words. This is the is have I been pawned, but with no A. Have I been P W N E D dot com. And so you can check and see if your email or phone number is in some kind of data breach. Oh, okay. And act accordingly. Have H A V E I B E E N P W N E D dot com. 
And when I put mine in, I had not been punked. <laughs> I hadn't been a part of a data breach. Nice. Um, so that that was cool because I shoot, I don't know. I probably that I got an email. I ain't, a hotmail. I ain't even using ERC centers. I don't even know the password no more. <laughs> Bro, you remember hotmail? Oh yeah. And every time somebody say they got an AOL, I'm so done. I be like, oh my gosh, what is really going on? Listen, don't talk about people with AOL. You got an AOL, bro? No, 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 no. <clears throat> no, no, my, uh, and two, two, two of the biggest people in my life, Debbie Antonella and Carol Ross, both have AOL. Oh, y'all, y'all got uh-uh. Y'all got to get the upgrade. I don't think it even matter, but I just find it to be funny. Be like, oh, and Yahoo. When I see Yahoo, I, I, I find myself giggling a little bit when I see a Yahoo address. Did you look at it, Brian? Have I been pwned? I'm about to look at it now. Oh, it's, it's I thought you was typing. Uh, um, yeah. it's it's pretty cool. Just to check. It's no, it. no A in pond. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, I see him. See y'all, Brian, and listen to my spelling as I spell it out. <laughs> Let me see. Uh oh. Seven data breaches, Lord. Yeah, you've been a part of some data breaches. Mm. Yes. I got to get So it. now, I don't remember what the lady said, but I guess you can contact, you know, if you feel the need to go to that. But Brian, been, been, his information been part of data breach. Yes, Lord. I got to get that rectified right quick. Uh, I, didn't get the F, I didn't get the F. Yeah. Go for anyone that... uh. That they'll set you up with a, a a deal where they can help you out if you've been if you feel that you've been breached uh, or have noticed that you've been breached. You can go. How out much they want? That is free. You just have to uh, change your password on there every thirty days. The uh, single oh. email ask you to th between thirty and sixty days. You have to change your password there, and they keep you abreast of the things that they're working on. But yeah. Free free Ooh. service. Look, you know I need no, that ain't it. That's an ad identity theft. See, and that's the thing. Let me we're gonna talk about this another time. Put this on the docket mm -hmm. to talk about when you Google and what's reliable and not just because most people don't go past the first page when they Google something. <laughs> and right. the first thing that they see, they believe it to be true or accurate information, and that's not always the case. And we need to have a conversation about that so I can do my part in educating people. Um, so let me get my phone out, Lord, so I can tell y'all what I know and something I don't say it or heard. <laughs> I have one for it. What is a hissy fit? Oh, my God. I, I, I don't know. I, Brian, I don't heard that one before. Yeah. I haven't heard it in a while. And I understand this next one I'm about to say in premise. But at the end of the day, it, if a chicken has his head cut off, they ain't running nowhere. Running like a chicken with your head cut off. Uh, so I think they do move with their head cut off. Um, I think because there's, um, it's some part of animals that still can't, like, so it might still run. It, that would, I don't This is know true because snakes can still move when they even they've been cut. Yeah. So you just, it, it was, obviously it can't see. And that the whatever left over in the muscle memory is still working until it's like okay we don't have a connection here and, and it died. This but that, and that take too much for me to think through. But I yeah. My my third one, my third and my final one, and this is going to really really show how southern I am. If if people didn't already know. Oh lord. Uh, well, that just deals my pickle. Have yeah. You ever heard that? No, I ain't heard the deal. Pickle Never much. understood what it meant. I, I've been heard sitting it in some vinegar a long time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, oh, Brian, I ain't heard deal my pickle. Deal my oh. pickle. I've heard it before. I, I never understood it, but I've heard it. But I don't heard you. I beat the daylights out of you. <laughs> 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 Brian, ain't no. Is it daylight in me that can be beat out? And I don't yeah. think I ever, I I was a good kid, but I don't heard people, I beat the daylight I, or I beat the brakes off of you. What brakes, Brian? Yeah. Brian, what are brakes? 
I don't know. I I don't know that nobody has any. But okay. Um, what what is really hope spring and eternal mean? <laughs> Do, if you know somebody, let us know because I don't know. I'm very unclear about that one. A hope spring and eternal. Um, a good movie, by the way. Hope Springs uh, has uh oh gosh, what's his name? Um, uh, Tommy Lee Jones and Meryl Streep. Anyway. Moving on. Uh, too big for your britches. Now, I can understand being too big for your britches. Mm -hmm. I'm not really. You getting too big for your britches. Buy some more clothes. Like, that's usually what happens when you get too big for your britches, unless you're extremely poor and then you just have the high water zone. But <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not laughing at anybody that's having a struggle. Um, but yeah, you gave him too big for your bridges, Brian. So when mm -hmm. I tell you that, what you thinking? <laughs> well, you gave like, too big for your bridges. Hey, you know, Emmy Award nominees. We can oh, look, you get too big for your bridges, Brian. Then, <laughs> and my last one. You know, I don't know who Scott is, but they walked away scot free. I don't know who Scott is and what that means, but, and I feel like I probably used that at some point in life. I don't know that to be true, but I have heard he getting away scot free. What is that? I don't know how free Scott is, but he out there Scott free is somewhere. Just as free as a bird. <laughs> free as, there's another bird. <laughs> See, we say them all the time. And I guess birds are rather free. They just flying around, do whatever they want. So that one that I guess makes sense. Free as birds. Lord have mercy. These things that we say, because our ancestors said them and our ancestors did cat it on, we hear them and pick them up. Hilarious. That's funny. Um, well, I think that's gonna wrap us up for today. Uh as always, I am one of your hosts. Emmy Award nominee Brian McKay, and I am with T. I work with an Emmy nominated <laughs> producer Davis. <laughs> and this has been the Mac and T Show podcast. Thank you for listening. This is the Mac and T Show. This is the Mac and T Show. We talk movies and TV shows. Sports and world news. Coasting like on a world cruise. Hosted by Brian Nikkei and T Davis. Yeah. You can't tame us. We go on to the top of becoming famous. What time is it? It's time for the Mac and T Show. What time is it? I said it's time for the Mac and T Show.